then we have to go right home because I'm afraid I don't know how my body is going to react to Hello friends, welcome back. It's me, Rob, my head's chopped off. Today I am here with a really quick video because I teased in my video, not, I didn't tease it on purpose, I promise, but I teased you guys, I said I had gotten the results of my blood test when I was tested for diabetes. I had a minor little issue that I wanted to explain to you guys and how I'm fixing it. So we're gonna talk about that today. It's gonna be probably really short. We have like four more days until 28 weeks and I will officially, according to majority of the charts that I've seen, be in my third trimester. Nobody knows how to count the weeks and the trimesters and the months. Everybody counts them differently. Some of the apps and some people that I've spoken to said it's 27 weeks, search your third trimester, so I'd be in it, which I feel like I'm in it. I feel like the big, huge, waddly pregnant lady starting about two days ago. Some of the apps say 28 weeks. My doctor's office says 28 weeks is the third trimester. That came out slow, but it came out to number three. You guys know me, I'm always like this for three or I'm a mess. The whole point in telling you that is I have tons of updates on the second trimester. I'm so glad I did this. I broke it up into two videos. I just felt like I had so much information for the first half of the first trimester to update you guys on that I'm like, this video is gonna be so long if I wait for the full three months of the second trimester. And I'm so glad I did because I have so many changes, so much to update on for the second half of the second trimester. Is it me or this felt like it dragged? Not that I'm complaining because I felt great up until 26 weeks when I started getting leg cramps and swelling and then 27 weeks is when I really felt like my belly got huge and I'm getting uncomfortable and I'm still nowhere near complaining. This little man is doing his mommy some good. So I was talking to a girl at the gym the other day and her friend who's only in her very, very early 30, early 20s, she might only be 20 or 21, was pregnant with twins, lost one of the twins, wound up going on bed rest because she did something in her pelvis, like she tore ligaments or muscles in her pelvis. So she's been on bed rest for about seven months. She doesn't even know when her due date is. She can't move. She's in tremendous pain all the time. Yeah, I've got some heartburn and I'm getting some pain in my pelvis and my hips and cramps at night, but it's nothing. I can move, I can work out, we're doing good. He's doing his mom a solid. I haven't said that since 1992, but hey, let's go with it. Anyway, totally off track. I'm like, it's gonna be a really short video. I didn't even know if I could speak for eight minutes. We're here at three. Okay, so the whole point is look out for that. I promise it's coming within the next week or two. I just have to get through this next few days just in case something earth shattering, life changing happens that I need to add into my second trimester video, but I don't think it is. I got my blood results back. My results came back really fast. I was shocked. I got them through the Quest app first, and then I got a note from my doctor maybe maybe a week later saying that my results were updated. I already saw them, but then they gave me a plan of action. I don't know why I was like a little nervous about gestational diabetes. In the back of my mind, I knew I was okay, but I had one or two episodes where in the mornings for breakfast, I eat what I call Adam's breakfast every once in a while. For me, it's a third of a cup of oats, protein powder, a handful of blueberries, some chocolate chips that are not sweet. I do, what else is in there? Some nuts, some craisins, which is a lot of sugar, and then chia seeds, and I'll pour almond milk or oat milk or something like that over it and make it like cereal, like granola. That is not my normal breakfast. I'll do that if I'm in a rush. So the one morning I did this, I think I ate at eight, and then by 10, I was starving, and I felt like I was having a blood sugar crash. I made myself eggs and toast because that's my normal breakfast is scrambled eggs, two pieces of toast and a whole bunch of spinach. I've steered away from my green pancakes for you guys that remember that. If you want, just let me know. I could do a full day of eating in my, I guess it'll be third trimester now because we're done, but I'm sure it's not gonna be too different from my second trimester. Although I'm starting to get a little bit of cravings. Like right now I'm just dreaming about ice cream. All I want is ice cream. Please don't hit me. There we go. You, you guys can see it, he got close. I could do the full day of eating, but oh, I'm babbling so much, but you guys love me, so. Okay, get yourself back, girl. Get yourself back there. 
So I had that blood sugar, the blood sugar crash. And like the rest of the day after I ate the eggs, are you proud of me? I got myself back. I know. I'm proud of you too. You, me, me. I'm proud of me. <laughs> myself and I, all three of us are proud of each other. Now I lost it again. Why do I distract myself about stupid things? Okay. I ate the eggs. I ate the toast. I ate the spinach. But the rest of the day, every couple hours, I was starving. I was tired. I wanted to sleep. Blood sugar crash feeling. So I was like, oh my gosh, am I diabetic? Because I don't know if you guys know, but gestational diabetes, according to my doctor, comes from your placenta. So I'm like, I work out. I eat really healthy. I don't eat too much sugar. He's like, that's all really good. That's working in your favor. And you started out, well, not I wasn't underweight, but I was a normal average weight. So he's like, you, you're lean. You're really, really good. Those are odds are working in your favor. But also that doesn't mean you're 100% not gonna get it because it comes from your placenta. So, and genetically, I do have diabetes on my dad's side of the family. My grandmother had very severe diabetes and my sister had gestational diabetes when she was late 30s with her youngest so I'm 42 which increases your chances of being diabetic again back of my mind I knew it was okay but I had those questions so I got my results my sugar is fine I do not have gestational diabetes thank god but during the same test I posted in my video where I took you along to do the gestational diabetes test with me and then I did like an after play by play so you knew if I was crashing or if I needed to sleep if you could go back to work I'll post that up there it took me a minute to figure out my thought oh my god today it's bad pregnancy brain it does it get worst worst case in point does it get worse each week they also tested me for syphilis which I'm fine I do not have let's just put that out there right now I am fine but they tested my thyroid because they had put in my chart that I had a thyroid issue. But on the other hand, I've watched other people's gestational diabetes videos on YouTube because I'm, I'm obsessed with pregnancy and birth videos on YouTube right now for obvious reasons. And a lot of people said that they got their T3 and their T4, which are both thyroid hormone, tested during the gestational diabetes blood test. So I don't know if mine was I don't know, but that's fine too. My thyroid is fine. Thank God. I was really concerned. They had me as hyper thyroid. So my thyroid being too fast, thank God it's not because imagine if they tried to put me on thyroid medication and slowed down my perfectly normal working thyroid, that would be a disaster waiting to happen. But the other thing they tested was my iron and my first blood test at eight weeks my iron was on the lower side but it was within normal range this time my iron was severely anemic they tested my ferritin levels which is your store the way i understand it it's your stored iron i call my girlfriend who's a nurse and she's also severely severely anemic and she's like well mine was zero when they tested me but you might as well be zero because you're so low so i had to make a choice Remember, I got those results a week prior to my doctor giving me a plan of action. So I reached out to my girlfriend who I talk about all the time on here, who's been like an angel on my shoulder, both with Adam with legal stuff and with pregnancy stuff. And we just happened to be chatting. I just happened to check up on her and she asked me how I was doing. And I told her that and she said her iron was actually really low when she was pregnant too. And she took this blood booster supplement and she sent me the link to it. I'll pop a picture of it right there. I've been taking it since. I had this talk with Adam and I was like, I just can't do this anymore. I am so tired all the time. Now this explains why I have this extreme exhaustion. But on a side note, I'm really proud of myself for being able to work out the way I've been working out my whole entire pregnancy because of being so severely anemic. The way that my body works and it's always worked. And I wonder if I've always struggled with anemia. My mother has, and I haven't been to the doctor before being pregnant for many years because I was never really sick. I mean, aside for like, from like mammograms and normal gynecologist appointments, which they don't test your blood like that. Got my test on Monday, got my results on Thursday. Friday was a really good day. Saturday, I was just having a really, really bad pregnancy day. I felt like I was gonna throw up. We got to our workout and I told the trainer, I'm like, I'm just not feeling great today. He's like, do whatever you can. Barely worked out, got back on the car. We were trying to run errands. I was trying to be a trooper, but finally I turned to Adam and I was like, can we go home now? Like I was just done, dead. That just happened to be the day all of my stuff arrived from New Jersey in U-Haul. So him and his friend went to go pick up my stuff. I showered, laid on the couch. This was 10 in the morning, 11 in the morning. And I did not get off that couch. I slept until five o'clock at night. Adam was in and out of the house with boxes. He was moving stuff around. I slept through all of it. I felt like I got hit 
by a truck. And when I woke up at five o'clock, I was helping him with a couple of things, but I just had no energy. And I finally, I was like, this is my sign, I've gotta do it. And we went to dinner that night, and I hope I don't get hate for this, but you have to remember, each to his own, each to her own, and I'm trying to do right by my baby. So my decision in the moment, after five years, three of which I was vegan, two of which I've been vegetarian, eating eggs and seafood, no meat, no dairy, I decided to add red meat back into my diet. We went to a very high-end place, you know, grass-fed, no hormones, that kind of thing, and I got myself a hamburger. The reason I went hamburger was because the thought of chewing on a piece of steak still grossed me out a lot. And I told Adam, I was like, well, let's go, but then we have to go right home because I'm afraid, I don't know how my body's going to react to eating meat after not eating it for so long. I thought either it was gonna go right through me, I was gonna have a problem like that, and I was gonna be sick for the rest of the night, either one way or the other, or opposite, it would bind me up a little bit. I had no issues whatsoever. I mean, my stomach was a teeny bit off for the rest of the night, but nothing more than the normal pregnancy off. My stomach has been a little bit off for pregnancy. Nothing terrible whatsoever. I don't even think I've mentioned it, except for when I was really constipated first trimester, but that's a different story. That's totally fine. That had nothing to do with anything other than baby. I didn't feel bad. It tasted actually really good to me. Weird thing is it tasted very bland to me. And I think the reason why it tasted bland was because for a few times I've had Beyond Meat and Impossible Meat, which is both fake meat vegan burgers. And those have tons of flavor to them because I think it's making up for it's trying to give you that meat taste. So I think because those have so much flavor, the actual meat didn't, it just tasted like it didn't have much going on. Although my baby loves salt. Oh my goodness. This kid cannot get enough salt. Sugar, he could care less about. He actually thinks it's disgusting. He makes me want to throw up. The reason I say him and not me is because I have a sweet tooth. I love sweet stuff. I try not to eat it, but I will opt for sweet over savory any day of the week if it's my choice. Little man, it makes me nauseous if I have sugar. It'll leave like a disgusting film in my mouth. I feel like I've gotten punched in the face with kitty litter. It's disgusting to me. I'm not a fan of sugar, at least he's not. It could be just that, that it just didn't have enough flavor for my little guy who is obsessed with salt and certain spices, I guess. When they're not giving his mommy some heartburn, but that's a story for another time because I've babbled for 15 minutes. I didn't know if I was gonna talk for three. <laughs> we know me, of course I would. I apologize right here, right now for having gum in my mouth during this video. I did not even realize it until I'm 15 minutes in. Please pardon me. I know it's awful to film a video with gum in your mouth. I didn't even realize till now gum helps my heartburn, spearmint gum and it helps with a little bit of nausea that I still get here and there. Oh, and the other thing about eating the meat was that it made me feel really, really, really greasy. That night after eating the burger, I just used witch hazel on a cotton round. I got so much dirt off of my face. We had been moving boxes and there was dust and all that stuff. So it could have been that as adding to it, but just like around here felt so extra greasy because I'm not used to that kind of animal fat. No big deal, I didn't break out, it was fine. I've been eating red meat, not chicken, not beef, uh, not beef, yes beef, that's what red meat is, Row. Not chicken, not pork, not lamb or anything like that. I've stuck to just red meat because I want that iron. I don't like lamb, by the way. And I don't think you get it as much from the non-bloody, like I need the bloody red meat, sorry. TMI. I've been trying to do that about once a week and that's that. The iron supplements, they make me really tired. I took one one night before dinner and we were supposed to go to the gym. I just laid in my bed at seven o'clock at night. Adam's like, do you want to come? I didn't even answer him. He's like, I'm going to take that as a no. So what I do is I'll take those iron pills right before bed. And my energy has been a lot better. I still have days where I feel really tired, but that's just part of the journey. When my doctor emailed me, she said to add, I think it's like 350 milligrams of iron. I already take a prenatal and I'm taking these. So I think that works. I go to see her in a week and a half. I'm sure she'll bring it up. We'll talk about it. I'm gonna bring the bottle of what I'm taking. I'll tell her that I wasn't eating meat and I added red meat back and I don't know if they're gonna wanna test my blood again or not, but that's what we're gonna do. And we're gonna go from there. It's so funny, this girl next to me is just watching me talk <laughs> at nobody. 
it's called YouTube. <laughs> if you guys are interested in other videos with me, just look back on my channel or click the videos that pop up on the screen. If you're not already subscribed, click if you see it, the little circle that pops up on the screen, or if you don't see it, the red box below, it's different on different devices. Give this video a thumbs up. I would appreciate it so much. It helps me out so much on YouTube. And look out for the second trimester recap that's coming really soon. I love you guys so much, and I'll see you in the next one. Mwah.